This is an instructional video of radial artery cannulation. It is a procedure which is often done in operation theatre and in the ICU to manage critically ill patients and patients undergoing major surgeries. Some people may use a 20 gauge gel go and others may use a pre-packed sterile arterial catheter kit which consists of a stainless steel introducer needle with tapered hub, a guide wire with a flexible straight tip and a smooth surface and a smooth flexible catheter with a special tip for easy insertion and fixation wings at the proximal end. For the arterial cannulation, patient lies in supine position with his entire arm outstretched and rested over a handrest. A small roll of sheet or a 100 ml saline bottle is placed under the forearm just proximal to the wrist and the forearm and the hand is taped down to the handrest. Clean the area with spirit or 2% chlorhexidine. Now, using surface landmarks, palpate the radial artery around 2 cm proximal to the wrist crease. Give local anesthesia if the patient is awake using a short length 26 gauge needle by injecting not more than 0.3 to 0.5 ml of 2% lignocaine. Keep the injection superficial. Now, using all aseptic precautions, wearing a sterile gown and gloves after a washing up or a alcoholic rinse, clean the surface with bitidin for asepsis. Place sterile drapes all around the puncture site. Palpate the pulse with a non-dominant hand while holding the introducer needle in the dominant hand like a pencil. Puncture the skin with the introducer needle at about 45 to 60 degree angle. Once the skin is punctured, tilt the introducer needle to around 30 degrees for further advancement. As the needle enters the artery, a flash of blood is seen at its distal end. The flexible straight end of the guide wire is then advanced into the artery through the introducer needle. The introducer needle is then removed over the guide wire and disposed of in a sharp needle container. The sterile arterial catheter is now guided over the guide wire into the artery, making sure the guide wire tip is held at all the times, as you do not want to lose the wire in the arterial circulation. The entire length of the arterial catheter is introduced into the arterial lumen and now the guide wire is removed. and the pulsatile flow of the blood from the radial artery is confirmed. The saline flush tubing from the transducer set is then attached to the arterial catheter and is screwed well to prevent any leaks. A sterile transparent dressing is then applied. Alternatively, stitches can also be taken at the proximal wings of the arterial catheter. Make sure there is no kinking of the catheter at the puncture site. To stabilize the long tubing and to prevent accidental dislodgement of the arterial catheter, a dynaplast ticking is applied over the distal forearm. The tubing is looped around the thumb to make it extra secure. The transducer setup has a 500cc normal saline bottle inside a pressure bag with a pressure of about 300mm of mercury to prevent any backflow and also to allow to flush the catheter when needed. The pressurized normal saline bottle is connected via a flush tubing set to the transducer. The transducer is placed in a holder and from the lower end it is connected to the transducer cable which is hooked to the monitor. From the upper end, the transducer is connected with a flush tubing to the arterial catheter. Once the arterial waveform is seen in the monitor, we can proceed to zeroing of the line transducer. Select the arterial waveform on the monitor, press zero art. To zero the transducer to the atmospheric pressure, we block the patient end with the bivalve stopper and open it to the atmospheric pressure. On the monitor, the sine wave now disappears and the baseline pressure drops to zero. As the zeroing is done, 
the numerical zero appears on the monitor. We now turn the stopper bivalve back to keep the transducer in line with the patient's arterial pressure. Now we have the arterial waveform with correct pressure readings over the monitor.